Good morning, St. Margaret's. Thank you for joining us on this uh, uh, Sunday morning. I hope everybody's staying safe and warm uh, throughout the with the snow and the cold that's outside. Um, hope everybody's had a wonderful holiday, uh, Christmas holiday, New Year's Eve. <clears throat> so let's start off our morning with hymn number 128, We Three Kings of Orient Are. We three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following on the star. Ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer. Owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising, gladly raising, worship him, God most high. Sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him. King and God and sacrifice, heaven sings Alleluia, Alleluia, the earth replies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Morning prayer begins on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer, as well as your bulletin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. 
Alleluia, to us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 84. You can find that on page 707 of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, as well as your bulletin. We will pray Psalm 84 together. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what the hope it to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the eight saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for all of us who believe. The word of the Lord. Our first canticle this morning is the Benedictus S. Domine. You can find that on page uh, 90 of the Book of Common Prayer, as well as printed in your bulletin. We'll say the Benedictus together. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born a king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by a prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had happened. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Our second canticle this morning is the Te Deum. You can find that on page 95 of the Book of Common Prayer as well as your bulletin. We'll say the Te Deum together. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. You, all angels, all the powers of heaven, Cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. May I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, uh, St. Margaret's. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. Uh, uh, I trust that uh, Christmas and New Year's were were good, uh, safe, and healthy, and that 2021 is so far treating you well. Uh, I I don't know about you, but uh, I'm not sad at all that 2020 is firmly in our uh, collective rearview mirror. Uh, Here is to hoping and praying that 2021 brings fresh change and better days to our world. Um, Although 2020 is behind us, uh, let me just spend a moment reliving a a little bit of 2020. Um, I I thought I'd start off this morning with a a story. Uh, It's really not so much uh, uh, from way back in last year, it's it's from the week before last. the night of the winter solstice, uh, December 21st, uh, last Monday. 
So last Monday, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at my desk uh, in my office, and, I, and I'm working, and I began to notice cars kind of uh, streaming into our parking lot here at St. Margaret's, as will happen from time to time. You see, at first I thought it was perhaps just kind of the regular flow of traffic we receive here on the hill. Um, after that, I began uh, patting myself on the back a little bit. I was thinking, well, you know what, I, I know what the answer is here. Uh, uh, people are curious about our Christmas Eve service, right? So maybe they're, they're coming to check out some times, or maybe they want to see what we've posted. Uh, they they, they want to learn more about uh, what Christmas Eve is going to look like. And after that, as the cars were still streaming in, I, I guess, well, maybe it's the beautiful sunset. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lovely sunset, and, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe people are, are, are gathering to check that out. It was only about the, the time that the, the, the 60th or so car had streamed into what has now become a, a quickly jammed parking lot that I began to realize that something uh, even more significant was actually happening. It was then, at last, uh, it kind of it, it dawned on me that people were coming to our campus to observe the so-called Christmas star, that once in every 800-year uh, evening confluence uh, of the planets Jupiter and Saturn. It was at that point I decided I would wander around a bit outside, and, and I started doing some, some people watching, and, and I watched uh, uh, individuals and families with their uh, uh, telescopes and their binoculars, and um, I just I kind of took in the sight of of seeing the people as they were looking for a star. And uh, as I did this, uh, a couple of thoughts actually popped into my mind. Um, the first of this was was this: uh, my investigative skills clearly are in need of a lot of improvement. Uh, you know, it took me way too long to piece together what was was happening. Uh, the second and somewhat more I, I think profound thought was this. Uh, here we are, the year of our Lord 2020, and people even today are still looking to the sky and changing their plans, looking to the sky and going on unexpected journeys to perhaps unexpected places, all for the sake of a star. We live in a cynical and skeptical age and yet, I think for those who have eyes to see, there are people all around us searching and seeking in ways that we might not at first expect or realize. Speaking of stars in the sky, I want to turn our attention to this morning's gospel text. We heard just a few moments ago from the beginning of the second chapter of Matthew's gospel and that very familiar story of the Magi. We don't know a lot about the Magi, uh, and what we think we know oftentimes comes more from tradition or Christian history than it does maybe from Scripture. For example, we don't know exactly what they were. We don't know whether they were kings or royal officials or that they worked in any type of government. Matthew simply describes them as wise men. In today's terms, we actually might call them something like astrologers. They were Gentiles who studied the sky, searching for meaning and direction. Nor do we know where exactly they would have come from, whether that would have been Persia or India or Arabia, only that they came from the east. And we don't know how many of them there even were two or three or four or even more. Matthew simply tells us that they brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. By tradition, it's been thought that these three gifts are symbolic, symbolic of three aspects of the Christ child, gold, for his royalty, frankincense for his divinity, and myrrh for his death. It's these gifts that I want to spend just the next uh, few minutes kind of unpacking and exploring with you. I want us to stop just a moment 
I want us to think about just how astonishing a journey the Magi must have gone on simply for that brief, ever brief, ever fleeting chance to offer gifts to Jesus. They traveled hundreds of miles. They went through foreign lands. They went on this journey at great personal cost and even danger, just for the sake of bowing down before a very young child and presenting these gifts. It's in Jerusalem when they have made most of their way to their final destination that they put their lives at risk one final time, maybe not realizing it, but they approach none other than King Herod, all with the hope of finding out where exactly the child they were seeking was. This raises a rather compelling question. Why? Why did these wise men from the East make this fantastic journey for the sake of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. To understand uh, and explore this a bit, I I want us to to think just a moment also about the gifts that we humans give each other. Sadly, it can be really difficult for people to offer gifts to one another. So often, uh, we end up thinking, and this is kind of ironic, we end up thinking about gifts in terms of debt and obligation. For example, there are days in our culture, we had one just a few days ago, in fact, where we're supposed to give gifts to one uh, one another, and we, we have a hard time receiving gifts whenever we can't offer anything in return. Why? Because we don't like that feeling of being indebted to others. Our economy of work and reward is so deeply ingrained in us that we simply have no idea what to do with unexpected or lavish gifts. And it's for this reason that we humans so often struggle with something as extravagant as God's grace. This is why we bargain with God. Even though we might think in our, in our minds that grace is what life is all about, in our hearts we convince ourselves that God is someone who can be bargained with. God is someone who's waiting to reward us for our good actions and choices and behavior and also waiting to punish us if we happen to go astray. We do this thinking that maybe there's some way that God perhaps in some fashion could be indebted to us. We convince ourselves that maybe God really does need what we have to offer, as if the Magi's gifts were the only thing separating the Holy Family from disaster or ruin, as if the angels themselves hadn't first announced the birth of this baby boy. We convince ourselves that we humans can somehow stand on equal footing with God, giving and receiving, owing and obligating, such that the end result of all this is that we acknowledge grace with our lips, but in our hearts we so often deny its transforming power. All this reminds me of uh, C.S. Lewis in his classic work, Mere Christianity, where he offers a rather famous illustration for the realization that Christians are supposed to make for the first time and perhaps again and again and again as they make their way through the Christian life about the very nature of God's grace and just what it means to follow after Christ. Lewis likens our offerings to God to a small child asking for sixpence from his father for a present. 
When asked, the father agrees, and the boy goes out, and he finds the best gift he could possibly find for sixpence. When the boy returns, the father finds himself delighted with the gift from the child. It is a true gift. And yet, one can also ask, is the father any richer for it? No. No, he's not. The father, as the saying goes, is sixpence none the richer. And so it is with us. In one sense, you see, we have nothing to offer to God, and in another, we have everything we can offer to God. First, we have nothing to offer because all that we have, all that we could ever possess in this world already belongs to God and is upheld with nothing more than the power of God's unending Word. Our souls, our minds, our bodies, the very breath in our lungs, they all come from God, and they're ours solely because of the richness of God's grace. Our forgiveness, our standing before God, our very healing, these things are ours because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every gift we give to God is like a child with the sixpence. And every gift we receive is far beyond anything we could ever repay or return in kind. It is grace. Grace before us and behind us, grace above us and below us, it is all grace. And yet, we can learn a lesson from the Magi. And yet, just like the Magi, we too can present our gifts to God. We can forsake all that we know, all that we have. We can leave it behind, and we can walk that same road of faith to pay our homage to the Christ child. We can give gifts not because... We're seeking to bargain with God, rather because we want to offer our love to the one who became human for our sake. And so we, we can return to that question of why the Magi traveled so far to offer those gifts. And I think the answer ends up being really rather simple. It was for love's sake. It was love, not duty or obligation, not curiosity or wonder that compelled the Magi to risk life and limb and fall down before Jesus. By God's tender grace, wise men, astrologers, came from a foreign land understanding that God indeed had drawn near, near to the Jewish people and near even to them. And so they understood that that little child was worthy of the most precious gifts humans can ever devise or uncover. The wise men offered the very best that they had, all for the sake of worship, all for the sake of love. God didn't need, God was not richer for these gifts. But I know that God was pleased. And may God be pleased with our gifts, our hearts. And may we never stop seeking after the one who drew near. Amen. Let us affirm our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find that on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer as, as well as your bulletin. We'll say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven 
and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. And you, Lord, is our hope. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields as they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No
Margaret's is praying for the church, the nation, and the world. Pray especially this time for those in our community in need of healing. Earl, Sandy, Peter, Anne, Linda, Kathy, Kim, Rebecca, Dawn, Adriana, Cindy, Brad, Aid, Larry, Gretchen. We pray also for those needing strength and guidance. Phil, Alice, Silas, Davina, Ned, Pat. We offer this morning as well a special prayer for our missionary to Nepal, Corinne, to stay safe and well. Let us bless the Lord. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heaven there shone a grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, St. Margaret's, uh, once again, just uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, I hope that the, the 12 days of Christmas are treating you well, and that you're hopefully getting some time off and away and, and able to, to, to rest and, and to have some, some Sabbath time during this, uh, these, these holy days. Uh, First off, I want to say a, a very warm uh, thank you to, to Canon Patrick Funston for helping out last uh, Sunday, the first Sunday of Christmas. I appreciate that time to, to get away a little bit and to, to rest myself. And so many thanks to him. I appreciated the message and appreciated the, uh, the chance uh, for him to, to serve in our midst. And, and I'm grateful for the presence uh, of, of uh, Canon uh, Patrick and, and, and the, the whole family to, to, to be with us here at St. Margaret's. We're, we're blessed uh, to have them uh, in our midst. Uh, also, uh, our, our office is back open uh, starting uh, tomorrow, uh, the, the 4th of January. We'll resume noonday prayer. And, of course, then on the 5th, Tuesday, the 5th of January, we will uh, resume our rector's book study. Uh, if you're interested in that, reach out to the office. We can get you that information. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun uh, uh, to talk uh, theology and, and, and to, to talk uh, uh, some, some of the matters of God together as a community. Um, that's all I have uh, for you. Uh, as always, miss you, love you. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for this chance for us to, to worship uh, in spirit, and we trust that it's God's spirit that, that knits us together. And so uh, until... Uh, until tomorrow for noonday prayer and until a week from today uh, for uh, morning prayer. Uh, miss you and love you, and I'll say uh, bye for now.